हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अनदर पार्ट ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद दैट टॉपिक आई वुड लाइक टू रीड दिस पोएट्री हिस प्रेजेंस बाय अलोरा नाइट एंड दिस वाज पब्लिश्ड इन 2018 अ ब्यूटीफुल पोएम इट्स अ बिग पोएम एक्चुअली बट आई हैव जस्ट टेकन अ फ्यू वर्ड्स फ्रॉम इट टू स्टैंड्स अप A friend of mine once asked me, "Just how could I believe in someone I never saw, nor spoken words deceived?" I thought, perhaps I should explain just why I have no doubt that it was God's creativeness that brought this world about. Beautiful poem. Now, if you see, there are some words which rhyme. and make it so beautiful for us the same things if we would have said in the simple statement form it it would it would look beautiful but still that feel that we get now the poetic feel the sing song manner in which we say it doesn't come in so such kind of things when we want to do with our language and make it very beautiful make it look very uh, different from the normal language that we speak in our day to day life we can make use of something called as figures of speech now what are figures of speech any idea what are figures of speech i'm sure all of you must be uh, uh thinking about it you must be knowing and some are the very common ones that we have been learning it right from the childhood maybe fifth standard or sixth standard so today we will see some of it so what is a figure of speech it's the art of language language in itself is a, an art that we use it is also a science but why it is art is because it makes things it makes our communication look so beautiful uh language uh, has a lot of ways to communicate there is a variety that we find in languages and various languages have their various ways there are symbols and many more things to make the language uh, have lot of variations to communicate now we will learn about figures of speech what it is it is one of the variety in language one of the variety of ways to communicate so it is a literary decorative device now when we literally don't mean something but say to bring some kind of style into our words some stylistic effort uh, uh, into our words then we could say that we are we can make use of figures of speech most of the figures of speech uh, that is the names of those particular types of figures of speech is derived from original greek or latin all of us knew know that uh, before english language came into existence it was latin uh, which was used majorly by people in west the figures of speech play with the literal meaning of the words and such kind of uh, words are called as tropes while figures of speech that talk about order and pattern of words are called as schemes rhyme schemes if you remember we had studied and we teach our students our children in school uh, when we are teaching a poem we talk about rhyming scheme so uh, those are rhyming schemes yes when we see the order or the pattern of the words but when we are looking at the literal meaning of the words then we call it as tropes figure of speech can involve uh, a variety it could be either a single word it could be a phrase or it could be an omission of word or phrase repetition of word or sound or specific sentence structure or addition of a sentence structure so see this statement now you must have uh, if you are aware about shakespeare you must have heard this n number of times friends romans countrymen lend me your ears and rightly guessed it is from julius caesar then oh my loves like a red red rose keeps 
the child is the father of the man this is a very famous proverb that we have heard many a times uh, especially in terms of innovations we talk about it then speech is si silver silence is gold go oh, death where is thy sting that lays his icy hands on kings here is the smell of blood still all the perfumes of arabia will not sweeten this little hand yes macbeth very famous line from macbeth what a piece of work man is as you like it you must address the chair now look at these words look at these statements they uh, we understand the meaning of it but the way it is said makes it more heavy more beautiful makes it a little different from normally for example the last one the simple one it is a kind of phrase that we use when we are talking about a conversation with somebody who is in the authoritative position you must address the chair or we can also say you should speak to the principal you should speak to the boss you should speak to the headmistress but when we say you must address the chair it brings a sense of realization as if you know something is very important that we have to pay attention to so these examples that we saw come from some of these types that we are looking on the screen simile metaphor repetition climax hyperbole euphemism anticlimax personification and onomatopoeia these are some that we are going to learn today and also know the use of it and how we could make use of it in our life for communication okay so very famous line from a very famous poem that all of us as children we studied in school daffodils if you remember william wordsworth i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills look at another statement continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way mary had a little lamb its fleece was white as snow shine bright like a diamond we are like diamonds in the sky this is the famous line from one of the songs sung by rihana so if you look at the highlighted phrases lonely as a cloud continuous as the stars fleece was white as snow bright like a diamond we are like diamonds now if you see the common words simple words that are used in these highlighted phrase is as or like and why are these words used these words are used to show a, a some kind of relationship between two things right such kind of phrases would be called as simile so let us learn a little more about simile okay what is a simile simile makes a direct comparison between two unrelated things or between two entities two categories okay now these two categories for example if we go back to the uh, example uh, lonely as a cloud i am lonely as a cloud so is there a relationship between me as a person and something called as cloud no i am a living being cloud is a non living thing but through this simile and the use of as i am trying to compare myself with the cloud the poet tries to compare himself with the cloud so there are two different entities two different categories which are related simile state that that one thing is like another thing and the words that is that are used are li like and as comparison is based on the quality or characteristics or 
nature of the objects of comparison so you see how the uh, for example the clouds uh, we see that there are various clouds in the sky and each cloud is in itself is lonely and therefore the loneliness of poet over here in this poem was compared to the cloud now continuous as the stars in the milky way if we look at the picture of milky way or a video of milky way we will find that the stars are moving in continuum in the milky way so the daffodils the flower is shown equivalent to the stars which is never ending you don't see the end of those flowers they are small flowers and they look like stars because they are golden in color and therefore it seems as if they are the stars that are shining in the milky way also if you read the whole poem you will find that these flowers are somewhere near water so it already gives a feel of water also seems never ending because it keeps flowing and on the bay side of the water body is the daffodil so the poet is comparing the daffodils to the stars in the milky way okay so that was simile then we come to another uh, example of, of another uh, figure of speech juliet is the sun romeo and juliet famous novel of shakespeare and here he says juliet is the sun then another one all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players this is taken from shakespeare's as you like it then her eyes were crystal blue lakes his mood was a winter storm now if you look at all the four you will find that again there is a comparison comparison of something which is uh, different from the other thing that is compared to but there is a difference in this comparison it is not a direct comparison but one thing is looking as if it is the other thing such kind of phrases or statements would be called as metaphor metaphor itself means one for the other so what is a metaphor it is an implied or indirect comparison between two things that states one thing is another to help or explain or show the idea that is hidden between the similarity so going back if you see juliet is the sun there is the similarity that the poet that the writer wants to show between juliet as a character and sun so it is a indirect comparison a metaphor does not use like or as remember this that simile and metaphor has a very fine difference between the two and that is that in simile we use the word as or like to show the comparison whereas in metaphor we do not use as or like it can be used throughout all types of uh, literature whether it is a poem whether it is a story whether it is dialogues that we are writing whatever it is we can make use of metaphor any time in any article okay so uh, after metaphor we come to personification a host of golden daffodils besides the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze they stretched in never ending line along the margin of a bay then thousand saw i at a glance passing their head in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced but they have did the sparkling waves in glee and one more another turning point a fork stuck in the road time grabs you by the wrist and directs you where to go this is from good riddance green days good riddance so all the highlighted words or statements or phrases you see fluttering and dancing in the breeze tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee time grabs you by the wrist directs you where to go now these are some qualities that we are talking of and 
think about it who does these qualities belong to we will see in personification to whom so those qualities or attributes belong to a human being and those non human things are described as having human attributes they can help the writer to create more vivid description of anything so tossing their head in sprightly dance now you can imagine if you close your eyes and think about it you have seen a person dancing and how children would dance tossing their head here and there and the dance is very spirited the dance is full of energy the dance is radiating positive energy so that vivid description of how the daffodils would be dancing like a child is very clear from that statement when the po poet writes tossing their head with sprightly dance so this will help readers like us those people who are interested to read when they are reading a poem or when they are reading an article with figures of speech things become more vivid and visual and a new way is involved in seeing the world and it also captures the human experiences of the world how do we experience the outside environment and what feelings and emotions can it develop within us can be explained very well by the figures of speech and especially personification when we talk of it can also be used to indicate that someone embodies a certain quality or concept right so uh, suppose if we are talking about something which is a non living thing but has the quality of a human being something for example the candle shows the light okay so the candle guides our way now candle is a non living thing but who can guide your way is somebody who is understanding who is rational that is human beings so a candle gets the quality of a human being so to show certain quality or concept we can make use of personification also sometimes some people become so great that they embody the concept in themselves like the concept of truth gandhi concept of mercy mother teresa similarly over here the queen of england is the embodiment of civility so how civil you are how uh, uh, you can say mm, sophisticated you are that is an uh, is a concept that the queen of england can show uh, similarly if we are looking at the concept of being tall somebody who has uh, or a famous or a legend for example a legend of bollywood then we would always take the name because these are the legends of bollywood and therefore we can say he is the amitab bachchan angry young man if some new actor is an angry young man we would say he is the new amitabh bachchan of bollywood or somebody who is very good with making of films which shows emotions like how raj kapoor used to do so we could say he is the raj kapoor of bollywood so this is how some people embody that concept make it a part of their personality so much so that we uh, take them only as metaphors and all great people like gandhi mother teresa uh, lincoln all these people would be called as uh, you know uh, a part of such kind of